Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I get a review for you of this little guy. This is the Benchmade Knives Saibu. So first off, in the name of full disclosure, I gotta let you know that uh, Benchmade themselves sent this knife along. As a matter of fact, I went to their booth at Blade Show 2019, and I, you know, was talking to their guy, talking to their social media person, and handling a bunch of their stuff, and I handled one of these, it was just like, oh, oh, that's good. And he said, oh, you want to check one out? I said, why, yes, yes, I do. Of course, I said in my full disclaimer, visible on my website, talking about the fact that I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, the ugly. Might be a gem, might be junk. Uh, but nevertheless, they sent it along, and that is a beautiful thing. But we have to assume, though, that this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever. And I'm doing my best not to let that affect the uh, nature and quality of my review here. So, um, but there you go, full disclosure. Next thing, let's do some size comparison. Here it is against the Spyderco Delica. And so you can see here that actually, um, in terms of sharpening, blade length, the Saibu and the Delica are very, very similar. Um, this is not a particularly large knife. Um, here it is against the Ontario Rat number one. I'm sorry, Rat number two. Guys, I'm not even using the Rat. Anyways, um, and we can see actually the blade shape itself is very, very similar on these two. This is in a lot of ways related, uh, it feels like to that guy. And then here it is against the Spyderco PM2, which is a very different, much larger knife. Um, but there you go. And then actually, I want to do a quick vertical size comparison because actually, we see that the Saibu, in terms of its overall thickness, is pretty close to the PM2. Um, this is not a thin knife, particularly. So, um, there you go. Next thing, this is a Nakamura design. Um, Nakamura has done a bunch of different blade designs for uh, Benchmade, and, uh, you know, they well-known designer, and so keep that in mind. And then, uh, yeah, I already told you the story of how I figured out that I wanted to look at this guy, so there you go. Um, let's go on ahead and jump into the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly of this very interesting little knife right here. So, um, the quick blade measurement real quick. We're coming in under three inches uncontroversially. Um, the first thing I actually like about this guy is that it's made in the States. Now, look, you know, I, I'm cheering for my home team, just as I'm sure you're cheering for manufacturing your company. Quality, of course, is about effort, not geography. But nevertheless, that's a nice thing for some people. So I'll throw it in there. Next thing, this is a, uh, a, a nice size. Like I said, this guy is coming in uh, uncontroversially under three inches, which is going to make it legally possible in a lot of places. But it's also just a good size overall. It's relatively small in the pocket here. Although it's a little bit on the thicker side, um, you can see here that size-wise, it's actually significantly smaller than the Delica um, in the pocket. And it carries reasonably well with a nice deep carry clip here, which although these uh, screws are underneath there, um, it, you, you have plenty of room and whatnot. Uh, it just, it, it's a relatively small and relatively nicely sized little piece. I mean, it works pretty well in my hand. I actually have, at least for me, a full four-finger grip, but I do have smaller hands than most. Um, and so that that's a nice thing. Ergonomically speaking, it's actually way better than you might expect. This little area serving as a thumb ramp here. That's good. Next thing, um, you have yourselves a uh, nice, unobtrusive lanyard hole. I mean, there is a lanyard hole on here, and you can definitely see it, but it's not necessarily a pain in the neck, and uh, that, that's a nice thing. Next thing, this guy has a uh, pocket clip that is mountable on both sides. You can see here that it has a pocket clip mount over here as well as over here. Now, given the fact that it has thumb studs on both sides as well as access lock uh, access on both sides, that makes this knife a fully ambidextrous knife. There is absolutely zero difference between a lefty and a righty's experience of carrying this knife, and that is a beautiful thing for about 10% of the population. So I like very much that it's a full ambi knife. That's great. Next thing, this is actually a pretty lightweight knife. We throw this guy in the scale here. What we can see is we've got a weight coming in here for uh, three inches or so at 2.68 ounces. That's less than an ounce an inch. That's a beautiful thing. I um, made a big part of that is that it's aggressively skeletonized. They've cut out all these holes in the middle of the damn thing. So, yeah, it's going to be kind of lightweight. Blade itself is relatively thin. Um, that, that, that's a beautiful thing. Next thing, nice details on this guy. Actually, I am told that Saibu is Japanese for details. Um, mind you, I was told by a manufacturer website. I can't vouch for that. Personally, not being a speaker of the Japanese, but nevertheless, um, it is a, uh, it's a nice thing, and I can kind of believe it, too, because there are a lot of nice little details here. One of the details that you'll see here are these wooden inlays. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, that's just a different color G10. No, actually, that is apparently Coca Bolo wood. This particular specimen has very dark wood on that side. It's a little 
lighter on this side over here, but this is actually honest to God wood that's been inlaid in here. You also see that inlay on the inside of the, um, the, the thumb stud there as well. So that's a nice little set of details. It's got your unobtrusive lanyard hole, which is a beautiful thing, and actually a relatively subtle set of uh, holes on the front side there. Um, you can see here that the wood inlays have a nice little area here that's cut out for the screw, um, and the same thing on the back here. So that, that again, little tiny details. That's cool. Um, you have a, a, a backspacer that I don't know if it's meant to recall bamboo, but it sure as heck does to me. Um, and it, frankly, no matter what it is, it's pretty attractive. It works pretty well in the top of the backspacer flush here. That's a nice thing and providing a little bit of extra traction, although traction is not a problem given all the cutouts here. And then one other thing I'll point out here. Well, one thing that bothers a lot of people with a pocket knife is when you have a situation like this one, where there is a little cutout here between the edge of the blade and the, uh, the, the handle when it's closed. If you take a look at this guy, actually what happens is there is a perfect set of alignment right there where it drops in so that is just barely just barely not visible. So for the people for whom that's bothersome, this is not going to be bothersome. That's a beautiful thing. Um, and so the details on this are very nice. And then finally on the good side is you're seeing the action on this is absolutely and totally on point. Now, of course, as I said, this was sent to me direct by Benchmade, by their social media marketing team. And so it wouldn't be surprising if they went through there and they picked the, 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 the god of all cyboos, so to speak, to send my way. But the fact is, this one's pretty damn good. Um, it, uh, the, What I mean by that is that it's very, very easy to deploy this guy using the thumb stud. It has a fine detent. It absolutely drops shut with the, the axis lock closed. Um, It is dead centered right in the middle there, and the action is absolutely smooth with zero blade play. If every one of these were made this well, oh my god, would life be a wonderful place. Um, This action is 100% on point, and I love that. Um, When an axis lock e knife is good, in terms of its uh, everything, and this is running on phosphor bronze, by the way, Um, as all of their, well, not all, but most of their axis locks are these days, Ah, they, this is good. This is real good. And so to me, all of that is the good, is that the action is on point. It's got a lot of nice little details. It is a very lightweight knife, uh, which is a great thing. Um, It has an unobtrusive lanyard hold. It has a very nice carryability, being relatively small and whatnot. It is a fully ambidextrous knife, which is going to be a beautiful thing for the sinister parts of the population. It's a, a old language use joke, of course. I'm not a... Anyways, I digress. Lefties, hopefully you get it. Um, it's a very nice size, and it's made here in the States, which can be a nice thing for some of us. On the uh, great side to me... Yeah, that's going to go on ahead and be the blade. This is a 20 CV blade. Um, 20 CV is a wonderful blade steel. Um, you know, it's right up there with the best of the best. Um, but even more importantly here, we have ourselves a beautiful, beautiful shape on it. Um, it is reasonably thin behind the edge, if I kind of point out there. This comes to a nice, reasonably thin edge for bench. This is one of the thinner bench maids out there. It has a nice sharpening choil to it. It has a nice finish even. If we take a look at this, and it might be hard to show off, but in that blade finish, not only is there a little bit of mirroring, but if you look very closely, there's almost a little bit of grooving. You can tell where it was, you know, this has been CNC ground from the looks of it, um, but you can tell that they've really got that dialed in there. It's just, it's a beautiful finish, and frankly, it's just a good tool. This blade is an excellent, excellent tool. I love, love, love this kind of a blade shape, a very simple drop point with some flat here, some belly here, some tip here, because it allows you to do these kinds of scraping cuts if you need to. This is just a great blade shape. I like this blade so damn much, and it's reminiscent of the blade on one of my very favorite pocket knives, the Rat 2 there, um, or the Rat 1 for that matter, and it's 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 just good. And so to me, what's great about this 100%, 1000% is the blade. Uh, this is just a really, really nice blade. On the bad side, to start with, um, the look on this guy, I'm gonna be honest with you, I saw this guy in catalogs, and, um, I didn't really pay it a second mind. When I saw it in person, it looks a lot nicer. So if you look at it this, and I, you know, I hope on the video I can kind of capture the nature of it, and especially with these dark inlays, actually, I like the darker inlays a little better than when they get orangey, right? Um, but this is a, a much more attractive knife when you see it in person, so that's something to keep in mind. Next thing, price on this guy, um, this is um, 216 bucks. Now, okay, 
as a uh, butterfly in the blade, so it's going to be a little expensive. Um, and, you know, it's not ripping my face off. This is not the world's most expensive pocket knife here, but it is definitely a little bit up there. I feel like this would be a much more competitive knife around the 180 bucks or so. That seems to be a really sweet spot. This guy has gone up a little bit higher than I expected. And, in fact, if you're going to go up that high, I'd like to see a couple of little extra mile things. I like having the little dot of wood inside the uh, thumb stud there, uh, but, you know, maybe how about in the, inside the axis line? lock pin as well. I think that would be kind of cool, right? I think that, that, that would make it somewhat attractive. And, you know, you can't do it in the pivot because, you know, on that side, it's a screw. But on the, the axis lock, you could do both sides, and that would be a nice thing to see. Um, Next thing on this guy, um, one thing that even my, uh, you know, I handed this to my wife, and she asked me, why is the blade so much less tall than the handle? I didn't have a good reason for it. I mean, in practice, it's probably partially to the backspace and partly just geometry. But it is a little bit off balance, right? I mean, at some level, this part feels a lot smaller than this part. And ergonomically speaking, it works. I think it's a fine tool, but that is a little bit of a strangeness. Next thing, um, any time that you use actual materials rather than something like G10, which is what the rest of this is made of, um, uh, but any time you're using like a cocobala wood, you are at the mercy of, well, nature. And nature is a capricious uh, mistress, if you will. And as a result, you end up with, uh, you know, even inlays on this guy that don't match. The back side of these are a lot lighter than the front part. Um, even though they're the exact same wood, it's the exact same knife. This is just something you have to resign yourself to anytime you go with natural materials. There is going to be more variance. And so if you are really wanting a light wood, it may be worth your while. Frankly, it may be worth your while to go pick one out in person anyways. And it may be a good idea to open up a bunch of them and figure out which ones you like best with wood. It's assuming you have a very tolerant knife shop nearby, but, you know, they, they, that's the point of a local knife shop, right? To be good to you. Hopefully you've got one. But anyways, so uh, there is a lot of variation there. Next thing, there are some hot spots, ergonomically speaking. There's definitely a hot spot off the back of the clip here, um, uh, right off of this here. I mean, is it the end of the world? No, but it's definitely there. And then similarly, there are some hot spots off of these little areas for the lanyard hole. Honestly, although I like the unobtrusive lanyard hole, I think I'd like the knife a little bit more without a lanyard hole at all, with just a smooth edge on the back there. Not a huge huge deal, but they're definitely there. Next thing, if I really pop this guy open, as you just heard, you get a little bit of lock stick coming off of it. It's not bad, and in fact, it's getting a little bit better as I use the knife more and more, and I suspect that within six months or so, it would kind of be a non-issue completely, but there is definitely some lock stick there, and that is something to keep in mind. Um, you know, like I said, go ahead and treat that one with a grain of salt. Um, you know, in a longer time period, it might not be an issue anymore, but it is something I got to point out because, well, you're going to be hearing it, and if I don't point it out, if you're like, oh, you, you throw in the review. No, just, yeah. Anyways, and then finally on the bad side, um, the balance on this guy is a little weird. Um, because you have a relatively small blade and a relatively large handle, the balance is a little bit further back than I might expect. Um, it's a little bit butt heavy. Is it the worst thing in the world? No, it's not like full on Sir Mix a lot, but it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a little bit, uh, back heavy. I'd kind of like to see the balance a little bit further forward. Not the end of the world, but it's definitely something to keep in mind. So, um, to me, all of that is the bad, is that the balance on this guy is a little bit back heavy. It's got some lock stick to it. There are a couple of hot spots. There is definitely very in any kind of a natural wood pattern, and this cocoballo is no exception. Remember, these are the same color wood, at least nominally. Um, the blade seems a little bit short on this dimension here. Um, the uh, maybe I'd like to see a wood dot in the axis lock at 216 bucks, which is a little high, and it does definitely look better in person than I think it has in some of the publicity photos. On the ugly front, now look, unfortunately, um, you know, although this one is very, very nicely done, and in fact, I you know I handled one other uh, even outside of the show that was pretty good. Um, you want to absolutely make 100% sure. I mentioned that the action on this is spectacular. This has exactly what I want to see. Perfect centering, the blade right down the middle there. Um, no blade play at all, so there's no shake whatsoever if I go in this dimension or in this side-to-side -side dimension. Um, and a smooth action where it's able to come shut whenever I pull that back and deploy re uh, completely reliably using that thumb stud. Those are, that is exactly what you want. This is a perfect action. Unfortunately, not all of them that are getting out there have that kind of perfection. And so I would definitely recommend that you either buy in person where you can test the actions yourself, um, which is always a good idea. It's something I generally recommend with Benchmade. And, you know, here you get the added bonus of picking out the wood just that, you know, as you want it. Um, but if you buy one online and the action isn't on 
one point. If you're getting any kind of blade play whatsoever, if you're not getting a smooth drop shotty action, and you are not getting good centering, either return it back to the store or have Benchmade uh, fix it. The one thing that is to be said for them is they have a good warranty division. Wish people didn't need it quite so often. Anyways, I digress. Um, but you can definitely get them to make it right. This knife, unfortunately, at 216 bucks, you know, it's fine, but it needs to be perfect. And so if it is not perfect, if one gets out of the factory that is not perfection for you, you need to make sure they make they make it right for you. And so to me, that's the ugly, is that there has been a lot of inconsistency there, and so you need to make damn sure that whatever you get ends up perfection or that they make it right for you afterwards. So um, let's see here. That's the ugly. Uh, final conclusion. I actually end up liking this knife a lot more than in some ways I expected. Certainly when I first saw it in catalogs and, you know, as the release, I don't, I forget when this was announced, I didn't give it a second look because honestly I thought it was really ugly. It's like, oh, why do you have orange inlaid in black? Ew. But then I actually saw it in person. It's like, oh, not only is this thing good, but this thing, this part right here, this is good. It's not just good, it's good. This is a serious little piece right there. Um, and it is a nice knife overall. It's small, it carries well, it's got a nice action on this one here, it's got very nice details and a very, very amazing blade. It has downsides. It's a little pricey, it's got some nitpicks, some hot spots, this one's got a little bit of lock stick, and the balance isn't exactly right. But the fact is, if you get one like this where the action is just on point, everything is dialed in, Oh my god, is this a nice knife. I mean, really, it works beautifully. And I can tell that the designer of this spent a lot of time thinking about it. A lot, a lot of time. This person clearly dove deep into this knife in a very, very real way. I mean, that is a great thing. I love seeing these details. I love seeing this kind of clear thinking. And frankly, I, it's a knife that I've ended up enjoying carrying a lot more than I, I thought I would. I've kind of been dragging my feet on the review for a little while, where I knew everything I was going to say. Review was mostly filmed. It was just uh, it was mostly written, that is. But it was like, oh, I don't know. I better throw the Saibu in the bucket again, you know, just in case, right? And that's generally a pretty good sign that I love like a knife a fair amount. If I'm looking for excuses to carry it more, um, that means it's probably pretty decent. So I, this is a knife I like. I'm really, I'm right on the edge of calling it just like a full-on gem. Um, at this price, with the balance, uh, the, the little bit of locks, it's just right south of the line. It's like, here's gem, here's the cyber. It's so damn close. And a few small tweaks to the design could just get it right over that edge there. Or, frankly, just drop the price a little bit. Oh, yep, we're over. Um, but the thing is, I I, that, 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 that is my own weirdness. And I think if you really love the design, if you're looking at this and going, that is the most beautiful knife I've ever seen, or if there's something else that's calling out to you about this guy, then just do it. It's going to be a gem for you. It's a knife that already I like a lot. I'm kind of on the fence as to whether I want to have one of these guys, just because it is really, really, really nice in a lot of ways. Um, I'm very, very impressed with it. And I, so I think, and that's the reason I want to check it out, right? Um, so I think that if you're loving the look, um, and you, you're loving everything else this is putting down, it's going to be a great tool, and I think it could be a very, very good idea for you to log on in to Saibu Space. Okay, there you go. That was terrible, even by my standards. Hope this has been interesting to you, and have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. So if I use this to cut open a fishnet, would that be Cybunetic? Anyways, I digress. Bye now.